All right. Yeah. So this is going to be our summary. Crappy listening test summary. We're going to go back through everything we just talked about for those who just okay, want to. So, okay, so we're going to break this video off to a short video. And basically the purpose of this video is to discuss crappy listening comparisons, why you should avoid these kind of comparisons, and how these kind of comparisons, especially the ones on YouTube, can lead you to false conclusions about a product. It may make you think a inferior product sounds better than a superior product because the listening scenarios and the conditions that are set up and the way you're playing it back through your own playback system can give you deleterious results. So Matt's going to summarize why that is the case and we're going to be covering the basic highlights of that here. Yeah, so crappy listening test summary. YouTube is not currently a viable way to provide accurate listening tests. The uh, audio quality that YouTube provides is too low quality to really be able to discern small differences in systems. The recording techniques that are typically used, especially the stereo mic techniques, are not an accurate way to capture the sound of the speakers uh, and do not accurately cap capture what you would hear if you were in the room with those speakers. Even the better approaches like using dummy heads and getting binaural still do not work using the approaches available to most of us. Those that come closest, such as oralization, are just out of reach for the average person who's providing these videos. Listening tests being provided by others online are not useful. In fact, I think they're dangerous. These tests provide a disingenuous comparison. What that means is that you're being pre presented with something, you're being told you can tell the difference, and this is a valid approach, and it's not. The methods of capture are questionable at best and inaccurate at worst. Many of the common methods not only lack validity, they have been tested and found flawed. So it's important to understand, I'm not just saying this because this is my opinion. People have looked into this because it actually would be useful if it was true, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Muddying the waters with misinformation helps nobody. So I want to put this video out here. I think Gene wants this video out here because we want people to understand that this isn't just a good enough approach. It's actually a dangerous approach because it's providing you with inaccurate information. It's not better than nothing. It's not good enough. It's actually worse. And the best options for you really at the end of the day, unfortunately, are that you have to learn how to read the measurement graphs we have because you can tell a lot about how a speaker sounds from those measurements and listen yeah. in person where possible, which I understand is difficult. But at the end of the day, that's the most valid way to be able to listen and hear differences in speakers. Yeah. So guys, you know, I understand you want us to do listen and comparisons. I still get the emails and I still see more and more YouTube influencers going on YouTube, putting the three or four speakers up and switching back and forth so you can hear which speaker sounds better. But it's a bunch of BS. We're not going to subscribe to that methodology. We're not going to do that until there's a better way to do this where it is accurate enough for us to feel comfortable with, for the research to show that it's accurate we're not doing it. So what we are going to do instead is we're going to double down on the measurements of the products. We're going to do more objective measurements of pretty much every speaker we review. That's why we put so much effort between Matthew, James, and Larson, and myself. We try as, as best as we can to do anechoic style, style measurements, get the influence of the room out of the measurements, and then we go over the graphs with you to explain um, what you're going to hear based on the measurements of the speaker. And Harmon's done a lot of research on subjective listening tests based on objective measurements, and they come up with a pretty high correlation of, of determining what speaker someone's going to prefer based on how it measures. I think there's like, what, a 90% correlation factor now or 88%. I mean, it's pretty high. So this is a real science, and I'd rather put my effort towards the science of understanding how things perform rather than coming up with these bogus listening comparisons. And then I want to also point out that we are living in a great time where you can buy these products online. You can have them shipped to you. Many of the companies give um, free shipping both ways. So if you narrowed it down to two speakers that you know you want based on the measurements that we provide in our reviews, you can go out and buy those two pairs of speakers. And at the worst case scenario, you lose shipping on one pair. You lose shipping on the losers. You get them at your house. And in fact, Matt, we should do a separate video on how to properly do a listening test in your own house between two sets of speakers, making sure that they're level matched, making sure preferably if they're blind listening tests so you're not being um, hit with influences of just knowing the brand or knowing the speaker itself. But we can get into that in a separate video. I think it's important to do controlled listening tests in your own home. And then allowing you to hear it in your own room acoustics to determine which speaker works best in your scenario. 
the way that people are doing it on YouTube here by giving you these listening tests, like Matt said, is doing more harm than good. Not something that we subscribe to. And I hope you guys can understand and appreciate why we're doing this video and why we're being so adamant about these points. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're, we're doing this because we want you to have the right information to make good decisions. And we want to speak out when we think people are actually providing you with bad information that's going to lead you down a bad path. So that was the motivation behind this. As I said, we were actually looking for a way to do it in a valid way if we could, and we found you can't. It's just not there yet. Yeah, and this person summarizes it right here. Bad tests can be worse than no testing at all because it can elicit invalid observations and conclusions. Science so demands. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely true. And I'll say there's lots of good ways to do listening tests. I understand that buying a lot of products is not always something that everybody can do. Um, but, you know, one of the ways that I've been exposed to lots of speakers is actually by going to people's houses that I've met on forums. There's a lot of people who do get togethers where they have a bunch of people over. People bring their speakers over. I've been to some where there's been 20, 30 different speakers. So there are definitely ways to be exposed to lots of different speakers and still provide you with an opportunity for valid comparisons. Yeah. So, guys, I hope you find this video useful. Um, like I said, we're going to do a follow up video in the coming weeks on how to do an accurate listening test in your own home. So you don't have to rely on somebody sticking a microphone up to the speakers on YouTube and doing a video thinking that they're going to save you time and purchasing the right product based on those tests. Not a good way to do that. Again, we do not endorse that method of picking loudspeakers. I hope you understand that. And until next time, my friends. Keep listening.